XTS 15 was out just a week ago and there have already been improvements made with 15.0.2 out as well. So in this specific video, we are going to learn the five exciting changes in Next.js 15 that you should definitely be aware of, the two breaking changes that were introduced inside of Next.js 15, and also some of the quality of life improvements that will make your life better as a Next.js developer. So let's dive in. So let's take a look at the five exciting features that we talked about. The first feature is Turbo Pack stability. Now, if you don't know what Turbo Pack is, it is an incremental bundler and build system that you would use instead of Webpack. Now, it is a build system for JavaScript and TypeScript code bases. And it is a really high performance bundler for React server components and TypeScript code bases as well. So Turbo Pack officially is now stable and ready to speed up your development experience. Now I have tried Turbo Pack in my current app and it is definitely faster. I can attest that. Now, with Versa.com, the site, a large Next.js app, they have seen a 10% faster local service startup, 96.3% faster code updates with fast refresh, and 45.8% faster initial route com compilation without caching. So if you want to read all about Turbo Pack, then you can definitely check out this specific blog post as well. The next exciting feature in Next.js 15 is this really tiny one, but has a huge impact, which is the static route indicator. It displays this indicator during development to help you identify which routes are static or which routes are dynamic. This visual cue allows you to make it easier to assess if that route is static or not. And if a route is in fact dynamic, that specific indicator is not showing up. That means you can debug to figure out why. This is a small quality of life improvement, which will really help you figure out your rendering strategy for routes. The next feature is caching. Now, caching is a big one that was introduced in Next.js 15 during the Next.js conf itself. This is a pretty detailed blog post on caching. And I also have a video on this topic as well that you should check out on called use cache. Now, Next.js has introduced a use cache directive similar to how the directives for use server or use client are. We have now a directive for caching components, page level routes, as well as functions. So you can just pretty much use use cache whenever necessary. So if you're building anything static and you don't want any dynamic functionality, you can add use cache to the top of your file. If you want to cache the entire layout, and all the routes within it, you can also just add use cache to the layout. Whenever you have any dynamic data within a specific page, you can just add suspense. So this specific route is shown some sort of a loader, whereas the rest of the page is cached. You can also cache functions as well by adding use cache to a function. Now, I also have a pretty detailed blog post that I'm going to link in the description below on examples of this along with an interactive demo as well. So you can just see if you enabled use cache on the route, then how it works, the different caching profiles in use cache and so on, and what happens when you invalidate the cache as well. This is an interactive demo, and this specific lesson is part of the modern full stack Next.js course that I'm working on as well. So this will give you a nice taste of what the course is going to be all about. So definitely check out this specific blog post if you're interested with all the behaviors of use cache documented as well. But at the same time, also check out this specific blog post that gives a in-depth description of what use cache does. The next exciting feature is the form component. Now the next year's form component is similar to how we have the image component, the script component from next. You can just use next slash form to import it. It extends the browser form element and adds special capabilities such as prefetching, client-side navigation, and progressive enhancement. So you would use this feature when you have like a shared UI and that specific form needs to be redirected to a completely new page and you're not no longer on the same page. In that case, you don't want all the other routes around it to reload. And this is where this specific form component really helps. Now, if you want me to create a video on this specific topic, then please comment below and let me know so that I know you're interested in this. But before form component, this is what we would do. We would have to 
if you we have to basically prefetch the code and lots of fancy stuff that we don't need to do anymore thanks to the form component now next.js has gotten a lot of heat because of self-hosting and how easy it is to deploy next.js to our cell but it is not so easy to deploy next.js to all the other platforms you have to really try to figure it out so next.js as part of next.js 15 has made improvements for self-hosting so you can you know exactly how you can add cache control directives and headers and so on while implementing all these different caching strategies. Because the biggest challenge when you deploy outside of Vercel is caching, because Vercel does take care of a lot for you. But outside of that, Next.js has made it a lot simpler to configure the expire time value in next config file so you can have granular caching controls. And whenever you deploy to any different platform, you will be able to configure it better. So you, we also no longer override the custom cache control values with their default values, giving us full control and ensuring compatibility with any CDN setup that we like as well. This allows us granular caching controls, which will really help us figure out how to self-host on Next.js. So this is a massive improvement that the Next.js team has made. Server actions are essentially server-side functions that can be called from the client. Whenever you export a function within a file that has the use server directive, that specific function becomes a public HTTP endpoint that anyone can access. As a developer, it is your job to protect that endpoint so that the external users are no longer able to access it without authorization. This is a well-known knowledge in the development world that you need to protect your APIs. With server actions being introduced, and the lines between server and client blurring, a lot of developers were forgetting to add that authorization, which is why there was an enhancement made in the Next.js 15 version. For example, anytime we have a unused server actions, Next.js is not going to have their IDs exposed, will not be exposed to the client side JavaScript code because we have not exposed it. And also it is unused. The second one is Next.js now creates unguessable non-deterministic IDs to allow clients to reference and call the server actions. This will make it harder for external users to figure out exactly the API that server action has exposed because these IDs are going to be recalculated between builds as well. Again, another precaution, but again, please treat your server actions as public HTTP endpoints and secure them where necessary. Now, I also have a video on this topic as well that you might be leaking server your data accidentally with server actions so definitely watch that video as well to have an understanding for how you can secure it and lastly this is a really important observability change that has been made as part of next.js it instrumentation.js is stable this means that the experimental config hook can be removed and this feature is now stable the next.js team has collaborated with sentry and Sentry is a really powerful application monitoring tool, which will allow you to debug your application in production through errors and loggings and a lot of fun stuff that we care about. So for instance, Next.js is now exposing an on request error function, which will give you more information about the errors that are occurring. Now, if you want to learn more about this, then you can basically track the server errors to any provider that you have by exporting a on request error function. Now, if you're running any async task in on request error, make sure that they're awaited and this specific function will be triggered as soon as the Next.js server captures the error. This is in a way a composed way of adding a error boundary and you will know exactly what happened for that specific fetch request. So this is a big change and I'm really excited that there is more error handling inside of Next.js so we know exactly what's going on on the server side. Now let's talk about the breaking changes. Now, if you remember in Next.js 14 and prior, anytime you use the fetch API request, by default, it was force cache, which means that it is going to statically render the page and cache it. It's not gonna change until you push the cache. In Next.js 15, that has changed. By default, it is now server-side rendering. If you take a look at this specific diagram, caching was by default with cache force cache. If you don't specify this, this is the default option. Whereas you had to adopt, you had to opt into 
incremental static regeneration as well as server-side rendering, which means cache no store and next revalidate whatever value you want to revalidate to. You had to opt into that. This was before Next.js 15, but after Next.js 15, this is no longer the case and no cache that is server-side rendering cache no store is in fact the default. This means that you now need to opt into static side generation that is caching. So this is a big change introduced in Next.js 15. The other breaking change is that in traditional server-side rendering, the server waits for the request before rendering any content. However, not all components depend on request specific data. So it's unnecessary to wait for the request to render them. So to ideally the server would prepare as much as possible before a request arrives to enable this and set the stage for future optimizations. We need to know when to wait for the request, which is why now cookies, headers, draft mode, params, generate metadata, search params, all of this are async requests and you need to await them. This is a big baking change because if you don't await them, then you are not going to get the token as you need because this is going to be in fact a promise. So keep this in mind for easier migration, the temp APIs can temporarily be accessed synchronously, but will show warnings in development and production until the next major version, but make sure that as you upgrade, this is a breaking change. So make sure you're aware of that. Let's talk about the quality of life improvements in next years. So my favorite one is the fact that next config file does have TypeScript support. It now is next.config.ts from next.config.js file. And it provides a next config type for autocomplete and type safe options. So you don't have to blindly guess what to add in the next config file or keep referring to the documentation as you want to add new values in the next config file. You can just start typing and see what's available, which is pretty awesome. React 19 support as of as part of next year's 15 release, we have made the decision to align with the upcoming release of react 19. This means next year's 15 does use the app use react 19 RC, and they have introduced backwards compatibility for react 18 as well with the pages router based on community feedback. So you need to keep this in mind that you're still using the react 19 RC as part of next year's 15 release. Now, one of the improvements that have been made as part of react 19, which is pretty cool is the fact that if you get react developer tools, for instance, and head over to components, then you will now see a server attribute here. This specific server attribute will tell you if a specific component is a server component or not. If not, then it is a client component. So for instance, you can see there's, I am using clerk and I have a clerk provider here. I have a root layout and I have a server component here as well. Similarly, as you go down the path, I have a gradient background for my next year's course page, my landing page. And again, it has a server attribute as well, which is pretty awesome because now you can tell which components are server components versus client components, which is very aligned with the static route indicator that we talked about. If to tell us if a specific route is static or dynamic and so on, there is now support for ESLint nine as well. And this is also something you need to keep in mind as next year's does remain backward compatible, but with ESLint nine, the flat config is now the default, which means that ESLint config.js is now the default configuration. And if you do have a ESLint RC file, then that is deprecated and will not be automatically be searched for. So your project can break. So make sure that as you upgrade to next year's 15 with the upgrade to ESLint nine, make sure that you are following all the instructions here to migrate your application. Then overall, there are improvements to development and build as well. So for example, during development, server components are re-executed when served. This means any fetch request to your API or third par par party services are also called. This is only during development, so keep that in mind. There is faster static generation for the app router. Again, improvement of build time thanks to Turbo Pack and other static optimization processes. And this is an experimental feature, but now there is support for how many retries Next.js need to do after a failed page generation attempt has been made. So you can literally add all these different values, such as how many pages will be processed per worker, 
how many times to retry, the minimum number of pages before spinning up a new export worker and so on. So these are all the changes that are coming up inside of Next.js 15. I'm really excited for this specific version. I have already started to use it in a couple of my projects and so far so good. If I no notice any issues, I'll definitely create a video on it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know if there's something that you need me to cover in Next.js 15 then please comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.